Give me the strength to stand for you when I don't want to hurt another for you. Open my mind to know your truth without doubt. Sing for you. There is one God and only one God. This one God exists eternally in three persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is God. He is eternal and sovereign, co-equal with the Father and Son. He searches. He knows the truth. He is the truth. testifies and empowers he convicts the world of sin so that you and i experience an outflow for real greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to living strong today as always it's a joy and pleasure to come your way and bring the word of god to you over the last few weeks we've been studying about the person and the work of the holy spirit are slowly beginning to explore, explore more and more about who he is and 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 what he how he works and what he does and um, as we said in the very beginning uh we we are pursuing a threefold objective one is for us to learn to yield ourselves more and more to the spirit of god secondly to build that fellowship or relationship with the holy spirit and third to increase a grow in our partnership with the holy spirit learn how to work with him uh, in whatever god has called each of us to do in life and, and and in ministry so we want to grow in these areas as we explore and learn more about the person and the work of the holy spirit and i believe god will enable us to do that on the program today we want to talk briefly about the work of the holy spirit in the life of our lord jesus christ and uh, this again is very important uh, as we look into the gospels and in the epistles look at some of the things the scriptures tell us 
about the work of the Holy Spirit in, uh, in the life of our Lord Jesus. Of course, we will not be able to cover everything on, on this single episode, uh, but I will touch upon some of the key points. Now, we know that the Lord Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary, uh, and uh, he was uh, incarnated. It was God becoming man. He took on human form. He grew up uh, as any uh, child would, um, and he was growing up in favor and stature before God and man. And uh, what we then read is this, that when Jesus is ready uh, to begin his ministry, we see him go and be baptized in the River Jordan uh, by John the Baptist. And at, at that moment, we see in, uh, in Luke, the, uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 22, and also in Matthew um, 3 and verse 16, the Holy Spirit descending upon him uh, like a dove and uh, resting upon his life. So here is the incarnate Son of God who is walking as a man, empow being empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming upon him, coming to rest upon his life, coming to clothe him uh, with power for the work he was called to do. Now, uh, uh, the next thing we see is that, that the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, and also in Matthew 4, 1, uh, that he is led by the Spirit. And we see Mark chapter 1, verse 12 also records the same thing, that Jesus was led by the Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit guided, directed uh, the Lord Jesus to go into the wilderness. That's interesting because now the Holy Spirit is telling Jesus to do something. What's also interesting is that the Lord Jesus is yielding himself now to what the Spirit of God is saying. So when Jesus is led by the Spirit, it means the Lord is yielding to the direction, to the directive of the Holy Spirit and, and is moving in, uh, in alignment with what the Spirit of God uh, is guiding him to do. So Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was tempted there for 40 days. And uh, at the end of that temptation, a period uh, where Jesus is absolutely without sin, he triumphs over every temptation. He comes back, uh, and the Bible says in uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, that Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So here we see him walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. That means the, anointing, the power, the empowering in his life, which was going to be demonstrated over the next several uh, years that he did his ministry, came from the Holy Spirit. This is important for us to understand that when the Lord Jesus, as it says there in Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, uh, 5 through 11, that though he was God, uh, he emptied himself of his divine attributes and he walked on the earth. Um, devoid of those divine attributes. When he was on this earth, he was not omnipotent. He was a man. He could be killed. He could be nailed to the cross. He did not walk in his omnipotence. When he walked on the earth, he did not walk in his omnipresence. He traveled uh, by donkey, by ship, by, by walking. So he was not omnipresent. Uh, when he was on the earth, he was not omniscient. He didn't know everything. Uh, he grew in stature and wisdom and knowledge. He grew in those things. So we see that as a man, uh, in, in his incarnation, he confined himself, he limited himself to the abilities of a normal man. He did not walk in his powers as deity. He left that up in heaven. He left that glory aside, and he confined himself to uh, 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 the, the abilities of a normal man. And now, as a normal man, although he is deity, he is deity, incarnate, limiting himself to um, the abilities of a normal man. And then he is now empowered by the Holy Spirit so that all the work he is going to do and the ministry he would do is by the power of the Holy Spirit and not because of him walking in his divine attributes of omnipotence, omniscience, and om um, omnipresence. And that's important for us to understand. You know, when, when, uh, there are many scriptures there when talking about the ministry of Jesus and uh, how he uh, did his ministry. Uh, uh, we see very clearly that Jesus' ministry was by the power and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Luke chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, as Jesus begins his ministry, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to those that are blind, uh, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Meaning, all that I'm going to do in the ministry, Jesus is saying, 
I'm doing it by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that's why I'm going to do all of these things. In Matthew 12 and verse 28, uh, and talking to the Pharisees, Jesus said, If I, by the Spirit, cast out devils, then no doubt the kingdom of God is come to you. So how is he casting out devils? He says, I, by the Spirit by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So here is Jesus ministering by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Acts 10 and verse 38, as Peter is preaching his sermon, he says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So the ministry Jesus did, Peter is telling us, he did it by the empowering of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then finally in Hebrews chapter 2 verses 3 and 4, uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that this great gospel which was first proclaimed by the Lord himself and then was proclaimed by those who heard him uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Telling us that even the Lord Jesus ministered by the power and by the gifts of the Spirit of God as he proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom. And this is important for us to understand because uh, later on, uh, when Jesus tells us that believers will do the works he did, how would that be possible? He explains to us that, uh, in John the 14th chapter, verse 12, he says, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and even greater works, because I go to the Father. Now, when he went to the Father, what happened? He sent the Holy Spirit uh, to dwell and to empower every believer. So the same Holy Spirit who empowered the Lord Jesus was sent now to empower everyone who would believe in him. And that's why we can do the works that Jesus did, because it's the same Holy Spirit working in us and through us, uh, releasing the power of God uh, through our lives. We'll talk more about that in the future episodes. Now, another important aspect of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus is this, that we see the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through Jesus. For instance, in Mark chapter 5 and verse 39, it says that, you know, when, when the multitudes, when people heard that Jesus had come to a nearby place, it says people, they, they went together, the multitudes went to the place where Jesus was, and they just sought to touch him. They just sought to touch the hem of his garment because power was going out of him and healing all of them. Uh, once again, in Luke, the sixth chapter, the 19th verse, it says uh, that people sought to touch him because virtue went out of him and heal them all. We know the story of the uh, woman with the issue of blood, how in Mark 5, and when she comes through the crowd, she touches the hem of uh, his garment. Immediately she feels in herself that she's been healed because virtue or power flowed out of Jesus. So now, what is this telling us about uh, the power of the Holy Spirit? That the power of the Holy Spirit can actually flow out of our lives just like how it flowed out of the Lord Jesus himself. So power can be transmitted. It can be transmitted out of our spirit, through our body, and into the lives of people around us. And Jesus actually described it like this in John the 7th chapter, uh, verses 37 to 39. He says, you know, those who believe in me, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And it says here, but this he spoke of the Holy Spirit. So out of a believer, he said, out of your innermost being, rivers of living water will flow. What was he talking about? Things flowing out of a believer? He said, that talks about the power of the Holy Spirit, that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will emanate out of your inner person, out of your spirit, and will flow out of you to touch the lives of people, just like it went out of Jesus and blessed those who were around him, those who touched him in faith. So here's something very important. But the same Holy Spirit who worked in the life of Jesus is now working in our lives. And the Holy Spirit was released through Jesus uh, can also be released through us in a similar manner. That virtue can flow out of us. Power can flow out of our spirit, as Jesus described it. That rivers of living water, meaning great measures of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit can flow out of our spirit and touch other people and do whatever the Spirit of God desires to do in them. That people can come under that influence. So they, can, they too can be impacted uh, by the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit. 
But also another thing, important thing we notice is that when people who came to Jesus, they received that uh, in faith. You know, the woman who touched Jesus, she touched in faith. The multitudes who came to touch Jesus, they all touched in faith. And as they reached out in faith, faith made that connection so that they could then experience the power that was available in Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, and then the power that, that was flowing out of him. So faith made that connection, and they could then receive uh, of, of the uh, uh, Spirit of God flowing uh, out of his life. And the Lord Jesus also taught a lot, uh, um, taught a lot about the pr- person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus taught us in John 3, for instance, that we are born of the Spirit. So when we are born again, we are born of the Spirit. And he said, you know, uh, you can't understand it, you may not understand it, because just as you don't know where the wind is blowing from and where it is going, you, you don't know where it is, but you know it is blowing. He says, so also is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So we can be born again, but that, that, that working of the Spirit, we can recognize it even though we can't explain everything about it. Uh, Jesus taught us that we need to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That is in John 4, verses 23 and 24. In John 6 and verse 63, Jesus said, It is the Spirit who gives a life. He is talking about the life-giving power uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in John 14 and John 15 and John 16, Jesus is talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit to believers. He said, you know, I will send the Comforter and he will be with you. Uh, he will abide with you forever. So here he's talking to us about the Holy Spirit as the Comforter, the one who will come to us to strengthen us, uh, to uh, counsel us, to guide us. He told his disciples, I will not leave you alone, but I will come to you. So the Holy Spirit coming to us is bringing the very person, the very presence of the Lord Jesus himself to us. So Jesus is with us in the person uh, and in the working of the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. In John 16, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to guide you into all the truth. He's going to teach you all things. He's going to take of what the Father is saying and what Jesus is saying and reveal them to us. So he's saying basically, you know, I'm going to go away, but the Holy Spirit is going to link you up with me. You're going to keep hearing from me. You're going to keep hearing from the Father because the Holy Spirit is going to communicate to you the very things that I'm speaking. And so this is powerful. This is what the Lord Jesus said the Holy Spirit will do for us. He's going to teach us. He's going to guide us. And he's going to reveal the very heart of the Father, the very words of Jesus. He's going to speak them to us. And, and this, is, this is wonderful for us to know that we can actually hear what the Spirit of God uh, is, is saying. Now, after his death and his resurrection, before Jesus went up into heaven, he, fi- he gave his disciples a final command. He, he breathed on them, it says in John 20, and he said, uh, John 20, verse 22, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So before he would leave, here he is he's imparting the Holy Spirit. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples are born again at that moment. But then he turns around and he tells them, I want you to wait in Jerusalem because you are going to receive the promise of the Father. You're going to be clothed with power on, from above. You're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you are going to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So when, just before he ascended, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to come upon you. You're going to receive power. You're going to, go, you're going to be my witnesses. And then Jesus sends, having left his disciples with the promise of sending the Holy Spirit. When God moves in an unusual way, the dead come back to life. There is power in his visitation and a mighty outpouring in his habitation, bringing a revival in our churches and our ministry. All People's Church presents Get ready to host revivals, visitations, and moves of God. Trust you enjoyed the message today as we explored the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. It may have opened your understanding to some aspects of the work of the Holy Spirit that uh, you probably uh, were not aware of. 
or maybe it's been a reminder of things that you were already aware of. But I want to encourage us that as we discover these things, now it's time for you and me to say, Lord, I want these things to happen in my life and through my life. We want the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through us the same way that he flowed and he operated through the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's agree together. Let's believe God together and pray and ask for the same things to happen. Father, we just thank you for this time in your word. And Lord, even as we've seen how the Holy Spirit worked in and through the life of Jesus and, the pro and what Jesus said the Holy Spirit will do for us, we ask that those very things will take place. Holy Spirit, we invite you now. I pray, Lord, for those who are watching, that you, Lord, will come and work powerfully in them. Let your power flow out of their lives, let it emanate out of their being. Let rivers of living water flow out of their innermost person. And Holy Spirit, I pray that even as Jesus said, you will guide them, you will teach them, you will bring all things to their remembrance, you will be their comforter. And Holy Spirit, that you will speak to them the very heart of the Father, that you will speak to them the very things Jesus is speaking. And I pray, Lord, that they will experience you in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the Word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best tapped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact. Come. Discover. Fulfill. Admissions are now open for the academic year for the short-term courses starting October 2016. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number 1-800-300-00998, mobile number 99457-09777 or landline number 0806561-0823. You can also email us at contact at apcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website, apcwo.org slash Bible College. We invite you to visit our church website, www.apcwo.org, where we provide several free resources including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and free publications that you can download and use. You can also call, email, or write to us to request your free printed copy of our publications. Please feel free to share your comments and prayer requests when you contact us. Still more awesome than I know 
All of 